So let's talk about Faraday's Law and the change in flux with respect to time on a graph. First off, a quick little review. Flux is defined as BA cosine theta, so that's the cross product actually between the B field and the area vector. If we look at this, we can think of a conducting ring, and in this ring, the plane of the ring has the area, but then it has an area vector, and the area vector is perpendicular to it, and then I've got the black lines, which are the B field. In this case, the B field is going through the ring itself. They're going to produce an induced EMF, that's the symbol over here, uh, and that's equal to a negative N change in flux over time, that's change in time. So N is the number of rings that I have. If I have just one ring, then it's just one. If I have a thousand rings, it would be a thousand. The negative sign comes from Lenz's Law because Lenz's Law always says when you try to change the flux, there's motion to counter that change. That's where the negative comes from. And you've got to do a little bit of review for these types of problems. You've got to remember that the voltage is equal to IR. That's the voltage is proportional to the current. That's what's important about Ohm's Law for this, is that the voltage is proportional to the current. That means that the current is proportional to the induced EMF, which is equal to negative N, change in flux over the change in time. But if I'm looking at the graph, I can see I have change in flux or change in time. That's basically off the graph. That's going to be rise divided by run. So that's the slope. So that part of the equation can actually be determined from the graph by looking at the slope. Okay, let's look at a couple problems. A ring is moved through a magnetic field in such a way that the flux versus time graph looks like this one to the right. At six seconds, the current in the ring is rotating clockwise. At what times is the current also rotating clockwise and counterclockwise? So the clue is in the question. In the question, it defines at six seconds it's rotating clockwise. So that's helpful. All I gotta do is go to six seconds and see what kind of slope I have. And in this case, I have a negative slope. So according to the question, whenever I have a negative slope, it's rotating clockwise. And that's just for this question. Every question may have its own defining characteristic. So if I'm looking for other times it's rotating clockwise, it's gonna be other negative slopes. So that's gonna be over here from 16 to 20 seconds. And that means that if that's negative, if that's clockwise, then a positive slope in this case is counterclockwise. Again, that's because the question defines it. Now, uh, I have one other counterclockwise section on here, and that is the whole section from 0 to 8 seconds. That's the one that contains the 6 seconds. It's not mentioned in a, the answers here. And then, of course, I have a slope of 0. And where there's a slope of 0, there's no change in flux. No change in flux means no potential difference and no current is generated for those sections, like between 8 and 10 seconds and 12 and 16 seconds. Let's look at another one. A ring is moved in such a uh, moved. Sorry, a ring is moved through a magnetic field in such a way that the flux versus time graph looks like the one to the right. At 18 seconds, the current in the ring is rotating clockwise. At what times is the current also rotating clockwise and counterclockwise? So again, my clue is given in the problem. It says 18 seconds this time clockwise, and that's a negative slope. So really none because I don't have any other negative slopes in this problem clockwise, that's going to be from 0 to 8 seconds, and then I'll have a different change in flux with respect to time from 8 to 12 seconds. And that's because they're the opposite slope of what it was in 18, and 18 was defined in the problem as being clockwise. Let's look at another question. A coil of wires moved through a magnetic field in such a way that the flux versus time graph looks like the one to the right. Rank each line segment in terms of the magnitude of the induced current that is generated. Alright, the induced current. So the induced current Let's see, current from Ohm's law is proportional to the induced potential difference, that's the EMF, and that's equal to negative N, change in flux over change in time. And the change in flux over change in time, that's rise over run, that's slope. So what I'm looking for here is I'm just ranking the slopes. So the slopes would actually be that number of the change in flux over change in time, which affects the EMF, which affects the current. So if I look at it in terms of slopes, I can see that it's going to rank as C, A, uh, C is greater than A, which is greater than B, which is greater than D. Now remember, the question asks for the magnitude. Since it asks for the magnitude, I don't need to worry about plus and minus signs. So if I look at the slopes, I can see I've got a negative 3. Let's work through here. Negative 5, 2.3, and 0.3. And since I'm not actually doing the calculation for the flux, I can just count the blocks, just so I can have some kind of number to rank with. Okay, let's keep going. A coil of wires moved through a magnetic field in such a way that the flux versus time graph looks like the one to the right. The coil is made of three turns of wire and has a resistance of 250 ohms with an area of 0.04 meters. What is the magnitude of the current induced in the coil from 7 to 10 seconds? So 7 to 10 seconds. If I look at this in terms of listing the givens, okay, that might help me. 
And now I also know that the current proportion of the EMF was equal to negative n times the change in flux. And again, I know the change in flux is rise over run, which is the slope. And Ohm's law is what I'm using to connect the EMF and the current, because it's saying they're proportional. So IR is equal to the EMF, which is equal to negative n change in flux over time, which is the slope. So I, and I'm asking for the magnitude, so I'm just going to take the absolute value of n over r, change in flux over change in time. And that's the slope, so that's where I'm going to find that value. So when I look at this, I find the slope, the rise is 100 Webers, the run is 3 seconds, because that's what the problem defined, from 7 to 10 seconds. And so when I look at this and get the slope, put in my equation, I get 0 0.40, not ohms, that should be amps. That should be a capital A, 0.40A for amps.